So I did not forget our newest branch of the military. We just don't have anybody for that branch. Um, and the Space Force is the sixth branch, seventh branch, when I add the merge Marine. And the interesting part about that is they had just got their song. I couldn't even find a recording of it. And it was written by um, a band member at the U.S. Coast Guard who made it for the Space Force. So if you have a moment, I would check to see if you can find the U.S. Space Force um, song. It's pretty interesting. I didn't forget them. I just didn't have, I don't have my poster yet for them either. I'm going to have to get better at that. All right. So I'm going to turn this over to Mrs. D. Donato. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tracy D. Donato, and I am the proud principal of Killingly Intermediate School. And I want to welcome you all to our 2022 Veterans Day celebration. We did a smaller celebration last year due to COVID, and we are extremely excited to be able to go back to normal and honor our veterans in a big way. So let's honor them right now with a round of applause. Thank you for coming. Now, I know that our students and teachers are looking forward to the day off tomorrow, but do we really know why we have the day off? Have we really thought about it? We know, right, we know that it's Veterans Day, but what exactly does that mean? Every November 11, we honor military veterans on this federal holiday. Military veterans are those who have served in the United States Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, and even the Space Force, like Mrs. Plantier said. And together, those branches are known as the United States Armed Forces. They have committed themselves to serving to ensure our freedoms, and they deserve our utmost respect and appreciation. We are fortunate to have had approximately 75 veterans visit KISS today, in total. And I want to both welcome them to our school and thank them for their service. <laughs> I not only encourage you to also share your thanks with them, but to learn as much as you can during today's classroom activities. Hopefully you've already had an opportunity to do that. Ask questions. Ask good and really, really thoughtful questions of our veterans. It's important. It's, it's vital that we learn from our veterans as we move towards the future, because it's due to their extraordinary bravery and heroism that we are able to live freely in the present. They put their lives on the line and sacrifice time with their loved ones to fight for us. We owe them an extreme debt of gratitude, and I hope you are as honored as I am today to have them with us. So welcome and thank you. Pledge allegiance and the national anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
So, we are so lucky that we have all of these after-school activities that have started to come back. Um, and we have a poetry slam group with Mrs. Alfieri. And they actually, yeah, Mrs. Alfieri. Oh, Mrs. Alfieri, we love her. So, Ms. Al Ms. Alfieri, she had two students who really felt like they wanted to share something to say. So this is poetry that they actually wrote, and they are going to share that with you. Come on up, I have Peyton Spall and Gabrielle. Help me again. <coughs> Gabriella. Someday I'm going to read what I wrote. So Gabrielle's going to start. She is one of our sixth graders. <laughs> Veterans, they keep us safe from all the crimes, but also make us cry. For all the loved ones we have lost, we respect you. So come celebrate and join us for today. So hey, how was your day? We hope that you enjoy our plans and we're thankful for the things you've done for your kindness, bravery, and strength. We respect you. I'm Veterans Day. Thank you. It was just a little white table, but it brought tears of mine to my Uncle John's arms. The veteran said, he came to dinner and stood by, set for one person, even though nobody would be eating at it. It was just a little white table, but earlier that day, Mama had told Brett and Samantha and me that the little white table we were sitting for veterans in was just like the ones that have stood across America in dining halls of the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, and Air Force since the Vietnam War ended. The tables honor me the men and women who serve in America's armed forces, especially those missing in action, our MIAs, and those held prisoners of war, our POWs. It was just a little white table, but it felt as big as America when we helped Mama put each item on it, and she told us why it was so important. We used a small table girl, she explained first, to show one soldier's lonely battle against many. To cover it with a white cloth to honor a soldier's pure heart when he answers his country's call to duty. We placed a lemon slice and grains of salt on the plate to show a captive soldier's bitter fate and the tears of families waiting for loved ones to return, she continued. Push an empty chair to the table for the missing soldiers who are not here. We lay a black napkin for the sorrow of captivity and turn over a glass for the meal that won't be eaten, she said. We place a white candle for peace. And 
finally, a red rose in a vase tied with the red ribbon for the hope that all are missing will return someday. Mama finished speaking just as sunlight spilled on the table and filled the overturned glass. It was just a little white table, but it suddenly made me want to burst with a feeling that I couldn't ex explain when Mama told us how much our setting the table would mean to Uncle John that night. That she told us something we didn't know, our Uncle John, who gave us big bear hugs and spun us with the airplane twirls and called me his Katie girl. Was a POW in Vietnam War before we were born. It was just a little white table, but it gave us the courage to ask Mama what happened to Uncle John in Vietnam. She quietly told us his story. When Uncle John served in Vietnam, he was sent on a rescue mission and his helicopter was shot down behind enemy lines. She, she began. And he and his three crew members were taken prisoner. One crew member named Mike had serious wounds from the crash, but Uncle John and the other men tried to help Mike get better and persuaded a guard to bring Mike medicine. Then one day, when a guard looked away, Uncle John and the others had a chance to escape, but Mike was still too sick to go. So Uncle John stayed behind him because he would leave a fellow soldier alone so far from home. But how did Uncle John get free? He asked Mama. Sometime later, Uncle John had a chance to escape again, and somehow he was able to take Mike with him. Carrying him on his back and covering him just enough rainwater and big leaves to keep him alive until so Uncle John found that the American infantry needed to help them. But even though Uncle John did everything he could to bring Mike home alive, Mike's wounds were just too serious and he died before the rescue helicopter landed. I know that Mike is only 20 years old and he dreamed of playing football and he loved America enough to give his life for his country in the duty calls. And I know how much Uncle John loves America too. But he learned from when helping Mike that a soldier risks his life for a fellow soldier because the rest of your country was in every man and woman who would lay down their life for you too. It was just a little white table, but it needed words of gratitude, like Mama's Thanksgiving meal. So before Uncle John arrived for dinner, Greg and Samantha and I decided to put three gifts of our own on the table to honor our veterans. Richard colored pictures of all the objects on the table, and Samantha wrote all about the words of my country to do as tribute and song. But I didn't know what I, a 10-year-old girl, could ever put on the table that was as important as each veteran's gift of freedom to me. It was just a little white table, but I looked at it all dinner long, and in the quiet inside me, I could almost hear the silent soldiers of the empty chair saying, remember us, please, we're real people like your Uncle John and Mike, we loved families and friends, Homes and dreams of our own to protect your birthright and liberty from disappearing as easily as sunlight from glass. It was just a little white table, but it took my words away when I hugged Uncle John goodnight and wanted to thank him for serving our country so bravely. So I just hugged him even harder and told him I loved him. Uncle John hugged me back even harder than I had hugged him. And that's when I knew what I could put on the table. My promise to put the words from my heart into a little book about America's white table. And in the book, I used Gretchen's pictures and some of the songs. Mama's story about Uncle John and his friend Mike. Because I hope that everyone who read it would set our white table on Veterans Day too. So the brave Americans, the little table honors, won't ever feel forgotten by a country they love so much. That in the salt and little white table, I trace the grains of their family's tears, what each man and woman who serves America is to me, a hero. And that's when I saw the tears of pride fill my Uncle John's eyes. Helped with that, please raise your hands. Thank you very much for taking that opportunity. I love it. I have only the fifth and sixth grade assembly people there. At this time, I'm going to invite my 7th and 8th grade chorus to come up. The first song we are going to, the first song we are going to perform for you today besides the National Anthem is a song called No Greater Love. Um, it is a song we performed at Veterans Day, I mean at Memorial Day. 
but it is also has some great messages um, that we think are important for this day.
than any soldier, sailor, airman, guardsman, or marine of any country in history. He's been taught to operate and maintain the most sophisticated weapons and equipment ever designed by the hand and mind of man. like a weapon, and his weapon like part of his body. And he can take a life or save one because he's been so remarkably well trained. So please welcome Mr. Arthur Wood to the Royal Family. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Arthur Wood. I have been uh, coming to this celebration for over six years, which I'm very uh, happy to spend with my grandchildren here. Uh, part of the time that I was in the Army, uh, I was down in Missouri at Fort Leonard, of all places. And uh, that's where I was trained. And the skills that I learned in the service has helped me to serve the city of Peabody for 39 years as a firefighter, which I'm very proud of. We 
very special as we come together to celebrate the veterans and all that they have sacrificed. We celebrate the Veterans Day because of what they have to leave behind, what they experienced and while at home and while they were away, their families also. The veterans, uh, I'm getting up here, while away they saw very sad and uh, bad things and they sacrificed it. But they moved forward for us because of their service what they have done. We have liberties today that we don't even think about, that we can do. Thank to these people who have served their time and done so much for this country. Uh, I would like to thank all the boys and girls here, the teachers, the principal, and everyone for this Demtog class that they put together here. Very, very good, and you people should be proud of what they have done. The boys and girls, the teachers, and the principals to serve these people who are veterans. They deserve all the credit right here, these people. And I hope that everyone has a good week and a good day tomorrow. And don't forget to thank the veterans when you see them for what they have done. Thank you. course back up. So we're going to invite our seventh and eighth grade quarters back up. And they are going to perform a song called For the Good of the Many. It uses a, um, a verse that some of you might have heard, um, which is, for the good of the many, so give the few. This is a beautiful piece. I'm really proud of them for putting this together. Um, and uh, they've only been working on this song about a month. So this is really our first big performance.
my heart when I I get to talk with with all of you. Our veterans, thank you so, so very much for today. Taking your time out of your schedules to come and spend your time with us. It's really important to ask questions. So, as we are going to get ready to go to classes here in just a moment, um, I want to talk to you about what those conversations could be like. Because when we start thinking about our veterans here, um, they have stories, they have information that they can share with us, KIS. Now, I am a, a granddaughter of an Army vet. His name was Leon Whittier. Leon Whittier was a lifelong Army. I remember going to the PX with him and to the commissary as a little girl. Um, and he passed away when I was 80, when he was 83. I was only 17 years old. I asked questions, but I didn't ask enough questions. I'm still to this day finding out things that my grandfather did. He was at the Guadalcanal. He was a food inspector. And then, how interesting is that? Out on the memorial table is his Bible from 1932. Um, I didn't ask enough questions. I wish I had. Because there's so many more things I have a feeling he could have shared with me. Unfortunately, unfortunately um, our, the one World War II vet that we had um, is no longer with us. He passed away um, last year. He had some stories. Some of them he probably shouldn't have told in school. But he made sure we knew his history now that he's not here. It's hard, veterans, to talk sometimes about your events and the things that came to you. You don't have to share today. You being here is, is a really important thing. But I challenge you to share. We don't want to lose this history. We're starting to learn that. But you don't have to. I don't want to pressure you into that. But please know that your history that you have is so very, very important to our students and to kind of things moving on in our world, our future. Let me ask this, KIS students, how many of you have military in your family or family friends are in the military? So what you were showing me is that there's a large number of you. For that group of you, you've also made a sacrifice family members especially. So I thank you for supporting your veterans and your military because that's a sacrifice too when parents leave or grandparents or uncles or aunts or cousins. So important to thank you as well. Now, I know letters are not the way we go about this anymore because they can do electronic ways to send mail to people who are overseas. But we are going to start our letter writing campaign. This campaign, um, teachers, there will be information that comes out tomorrow to your email. This campaign gives you a chance to say thank you to our veterans, to our military. There is the mailbox that is out in the rotunda. And I want you, as you write letters, to mail your letter. We will sort them and then we will get them to our veterans. Now, I would like to invite Kyla Stritch right here. She wrote something as a thank you to our veterans and military. So, I'll go ahead. I'm head cold, so. To the veterans and military workers who took the time out of their days to be here. I just want to say a few words of gratitude for your sacrifice of your lives for our country. Thank you. Without you, many people would not be able to do the things we do today. We vote, play sports, and even go to school. Um, many people don't realize what hardships you went through for this country. Many of you lost friends and family along the way, but, but you kept going and you were brave. Again, I want to thank you coming and 
I hope you enjoyed the show. my grandmother is smiling right now. Makes really tugs on my heart really good. Um, and I hope that the conversations that you're going to have in the next hour or so are really thoughtful so we can learn from you. And yes, they want to know what the food tastes like every time. Okay? Every time. Veterans. So at this time I've asked my veterans to stand for the playing of tap. This is Max Schaefer, one of our 8th grade trumpet players. Thank you.